Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Well, I have had many of you ask me, what can you expect to make if you take a plunge into the trucking industry right now? And I am here to show you our numbers. If you're new to this channel, welcome. I teach about the trucking industry with a heavy focus on the spot market as well as freight market analysis. So if this is a topic that interests you, feel free to subscribe down below. So what did our performance look like in January of 2023? Now for this, I'm going to be comparing one of our dry vans to one of our reefers. Now, as a reminder, our dry vans are operated by my business partners, which means that they do not have any payroll associated with them or anything like that. My business partners do owner draws. Now, our reefers are operated by our team members, company drivers. So since my business partners do owner draws rather than payroll, I have removed payroll expenses from the reefer operations just to even the playing field. The goal is to show you how much you can expect to make if you're running under your own authority. What is the income? What are the expenses? And what is the net income before any draws, distributions, or personal income taxes? Ready? Let's go! We have our dry van, one of our dry vans versus one of our reefers. Again, as a reminder, I removed every payroll expense from here to even the playing field. Gross income for the dry van, $28,685 in January. For the reefer, $25,712. Now we have the deadhead miles, the reefer did much better. Loaded miles, so then we have the total miles right here. Not bad at all. Uh, here the total miles are over 13,000 and this is because one of the loads actually trickled over to February. Now average rate per mile just for loaded miles for the dry van was $2.28 and the total with deadhead was $2.09. The reefer of course pays better. The average rate per mile for loaded miles was $2.35 and the total rate per mile was $2.20. Now let's go to expenses. So for the dry van, there we go, dry van reefer. So equipment wise, dry van, $4,575 for equipment. This is because we're paying for a new truck as well as a trailer. That truck is very expensive. For the reefer here, it's just the truck. Fuel expenses are decent. They're not as horrible as they used to be. $6,500 some dollars for the dry van, $7,000 some dollars for the reefer. Now we have insurance. Now you will see that the dry van insurance is $3,463 compared to $1,509 for the reefer. Why is that? Because under this company, we have two trucks, but only one is operating because the other one we are planning to sell. And the problem is until we sell it, we have to pay for both trucks, both for physical damage and liability. Then we have maintenance costs, filings and taxes. As you guys probably know, IFTA, New Mexico, Kentucky, all of those taxes were due by the 31st. We have consumables, um, things that we use every day. Then we have truck and trailer washes right here, scales, the electronic logging device, even though for the dry van for this company, we pay it once a year. Um, but if we break it down on a monthly basis, it's $40 per month. And then we have the load board. So the total expenses here are 17,000 plus for the dry van and 13,000 plus for the reefer. So what was the net income? Well, for the dry van, the net income was $11,316.15 this month and $12,699 for the reefer. Again, this does not include payroll for the reefer because I evened out the playing field. So now what I wanna do is I wanna compare the dry van to the reefer operations. This is the rate per mile here from $0 0.5, 1, 1 1.52, 2.53, all the way to $4.5. The blue line is the reefer. The orange is the dry van, and this is from November of 2022 all the way to January 31st. So what we can see here is that rates didn't really change that much, neither for the reefer nor for the dry van. So it's pretty much the same as it was from November. Of course, there are some outliers here and there. Sometimes the dry van was performing better than the reefer, and usually that's when we were in the Midwest. Sometimes the reefer was performing better than the dry van. But in general, if we look at the big picture, the rates didn't change that much. Finally, I want to show you this chart, which is the dry van versus reefer from the beginning of 2022 until now. Again, this is rate per mile, 
up to seven dollars per mile from zero right and this is in increments of a dollar so one two three four five six seven as you can see of course in january of 2022 both equipment types were doing really well then they started going down and they kind of plateaued from somewhere in i don't know somewhere in july maybe july although again they're outliers but somewhere in july they plateaued the lowest rate per mile we have ever had with the dry van was in January right here, which was a little bit over a dollar per mile. So yeah, even though it did drop from January of 2022 from a year ago, it's remaining pretty much stable for both equipment types. There was a moment where the dry van was performing pretty badly in October, but in general, it's pretty stable. So starting from January, I had a clear plan in place for our dry vans that are operated by my business partners. Now, even though dry vans are historically, as well as right now, the lowest paid equipment type, I knew that if I keep my business partners running short miles, one or two day loads within the Midwest, grossing a minimum of a thousand dollars a day, we would be in a good position. And I was absolutely right. Now, what killed our total rate per mile for that dry van I was showing you was the fact that I panicked on January 13th, which was a Friday. It was a Friday. I needed something to cover the weekend. I panicked and I booked a load from Indiana to Washington. Come the 18th of January, we are stuck in the Pacific Northwest with no way out. So I made a decision to grab a $1.19 per mile load don't hate me. Yes, I know it was a horrible rate per mile, but my goal was to get back to the Midwest for any price. Panic is never a good thing. It gets me in trouble each and every time. But right now, let's go back to the board so I can show you the load breakdown for that van I was showing you. And I'll show you what the rate per mile looks like when you're in the Midwest versus the Pacific Northwest. Okay, so these are our load breakdowns for that dry van I was talking about. So you will see here, these are the dates. Here are the locations, the origin and destination states, the amount, deadhead, loaded miles, total miles, and then the RPM for loaded and total RPM. So what can you see here? Well, the first thing I want to show you, Oregon to Illinois. This killed our rate per mile, our average rate per mile, $1.19 per mile. But now look at the Midwest. I'm going to make it in green because green represents money. So in the middle of the United States, Michigan to Minnesota, $1,700, $2.38. Minnesota, Nebraska, $1,400, $3.25. Now you will see that these are one day loads. Nebraska to Ohio, $2,100, $2.60. Indiana to Washington. This is where I panicked. This was on the 13th, but I booked the load for a day later. So this is where I panicked. Now, Illinois to Missouri, $2.87. Iowa to Kansas, $1,120, $2.32. Now, as you can see, the rates started going down towards the end of the month, unfortunately, but still not bad. Again, one day loads. Now, to Texas, it also pays pretty good from the Midwest, $2.81, but then from Texas, we're going to make this, let's make it blue, maybe this kind of blue, from Texas to the Midwest, it doesn't pay that good. As you can see right here, it really doesn't pay that well. But basically what I'm trying to show you is short loads within states like Minnesota, Nebraska, Michigan, uh, Wisconsin, Illinois, Missouri, Kansas, what, what not. Short loads in those areas, this is where you can make your money. Now for the reefers, although I do believe that running short loads, one or two day loads through the Midwest for reefers is a great course of action, unfortunately, this is something that we cannot do. And this is because our reefers are operated by our team members, company drivers. We cannot book loads running three to 400 miles per day for our team members. Otherwise they will end up not making much money at all. Now, while we tried to get longer miles for our team members this month, and we were pretty successful with that, one of the biggest problems we faced was of course weather. One of my guys lost so much time getting stuck on the I-80 because of the rolling closures. It was absolutely ridiculous. But if you're someone who's running under your own authority with a reefer, I still recommend running within the Midwest. Run short loads through the Midwest, one or two day loads. Make sure that your gross per day is acceptable to you. For us, it's a minimum of $1,000 per day. 
and you will be in a much better situation than the majority of other people. Now, in the spirit of transparency, let me tell you what happened to us this January to our other truck that pulls the dry van. On January 11th of 2023, this date will be forever etched in my memory. On January 11th of 2023, our other truck that pulls the dry van decided to commit suicide, meaning that the transmission completely died. So that truck was in the shop from January 11th to January 27th, which means that one of my business partners lost 16 days of work. And if that's not bad enough, let me tell you what the bill came out to. Almost 30 grand. Yep, 30 grand, poof, and it disappeared. To say that I had a mental breakdown when that happened would be the understatement of the past three years. But word to the wise, if you're looking to buy a used truck, be careful. Something that we have realized, at least with Freightliners, is that once they hit those 500,000 miles, the truck starts falling apart. Needless to say, we're going to be getting rid of that truck in the near future and getting a new one because those maintenance expenses on the used truck are not worth the lower cost that you have to pay when you're just buying it. And unfortunately, no, I was not smart enough to get aftermarket warranty. Another mistake you can learn from. So yeah, on one hand, January was great because it proved my Midwest strategy correct. On the other hand, that repair expense was definitely a kick in the face. But hey, we will survive this. It's all part of the game. Brush it off and keep moving forward. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.